All right. Thank you, guys. Um, we are at the tail end of Yoli's saga. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, even going back through it, there were certain things that I forgot about. I was like, oh, yeah, maybe that happened. So I'm excited to hear your guys' thoughts. Um, let's just dive in. Oh, wait, quick introductions. My bad. So Simone, author of Steve Johnson. Mine's Annabelle, and I'm author of The Eden Project. Ed Williams, big fan. Chavez, loyal husband, awesome fan. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for your time and your service, sir. Um, so let's dive in. Basically, book three picks up right where book two dropped off. So uh, Yoli has disappeared somewhere from what the people think. Um, there's a whole big catastrophe that you have to read. We're not going to recap any of that. That's, that's on them to go back and do that. Um, so book three opens with Yoli packing bags and getting supplies and she's ducking out of uh, the compound in the middle of the night. And um, right before she's getting ready to jump over the wall, Shear shows up and Shear is remember the 13 year old little girl. Uh, and that's kind of where we start. So anybody want to dive in just on that transition or do we want to just keep rolling? I think it's just, it's awesome to, um, to see just like in real life, when you make certain decisions, you bring other people along with your decisions and, you know, good or bad. And in this case, Sheer, who looks up to Yoli very much, it's like, hey, well, if you're going, I'm going with you. And no matter what Yoli said, Sheer would go right regardless. So, you know, it's just one of those situations and dynamics where you have to always remember that your actions impact other people. Yeah, I, I think uh, Yoli was resistant, though. She kept trying to like, no, go back inside. She was like adamant on trying to go with her until she finally gave in. So, all right. Anybody else? Good. good. I'll, just, I'll just say that, um, yeah, no, I was quite surprised when she like turned up. But and I was, I, I don't know, I thought, oh, maybe she wants to go and see you know home or wherever she was planning yeah. to do but like, yeah but so it's confused so I, I was just like okay I want to see where this goes because like yeah and I agree with um Chev what you're saying about um your decisions have an impact on others and that was yeah. uh, I, I was wondering what was Yoli's plan because you don't get know what she's doing so I was like yeah. what's her plan and now Cher's going to be involved oh I, I hope it can I hope it's not too dangerous right right yeah, yeah when Cher came along I was like oh my goodness here we go. This can't be good. Here goes Yoli. Something crazy. And now she's dragging the baby along. Yeah. But I was like, I was worried because, you know, all I could think about was Sonny, you mm. know, from the story yeah. earlier in the story. So, yeah, I, mean, I, was, I was glad to see she came and she tagged along. Yeah. I, what I enjoyed, though, was um, getting messages on IG from you, Ed, and you'd be like, here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, he must be reading it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wanted I wanted to message you a couple of times doing this. I was like, no, I'm gonna wait yeah. to the club. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so that's pretty much the first chapter is very quick. And then we go into Solomon's perspective as he, Ryan, and a couple of the other people in the group, they go into the tunnel thinking that that was the direction that Yoli went into, come to find out she didn't. So then they come back empty handed. So then you see Stacia trying to like work up another plan on what they're gonna do um, from there. Uh, not much to that chapter. Um, and then it goes back to Yoli and Sheer. They have made it through the Cumbrus Forest and they're sitting in the back of um, the truck and they're finally having that conversation of why, uh, keep wanting to call her Stacia, why Yoli had left in the first place. And so Sheer has this very, innocent gaze on what she thought Yoli was doing. So she was like, yeah, we're going back to help everybody. We're gonna make everything right. And Yoli was like, nah, I'm going back to kill everybody. <laughs> like I'm going to slaughter, I'm going to clean house. And so you kind of see the dynamic of how Sheer's innocence kind of changes the perspective that Yoli has. She kind of puts her flaws before her, like, nah, you gotta rethink this. So that was that chapter. Um, I'm just going to keep rolling. So if there's insight, you got to jump in because this book out of all three was the longest. And so <laughs> we're going over it today. 
it was just a lot. I, I think I think we do need to um, keep in mind kind of what you were just saying about how um, uh, Sheer started kind of rubbing off on Yoli a little bit here. But in the same sense, Yoli starts rolling off on Sheer. And of course, we'll see how that plays out later on. And then it, you know. I, I kind of beg to differ. And I'll tell you why when we get there. So don't forget that point. OK, yeah. cool. All right. Anybody else? All right, so um, they have their conversation. Then we head back to chapter four. And this is back to Solomon's perspective. So the girls have been gone for some time. Um, and basically, I think the thing that stood out the most in this particular chapter is um, they're still waiting on this attack from Sayla in the pit because she in book two had said she was gonna come back and just wreak havoc on everybody. So they're still like, tense and scared and waiting for this to happen. Um, Magda sends all the people from the compound through the tunnel and out to the coast to safety to people that she knows there. And she's also calling in for reinforcements. Um, and she also has this conversation with Solomon in this chapter. Um, she's like preparing him almost. So like, we don't know what the outcome is gonna be. We don't know if we're gonna find um, Yoli and Sheer. So whatever it may be, be ready for it. And so you kind of see Solomon grappling with this. I want to make things right with Yoli, but now she done up and left again. She's always running away. She's always doing something. So he never really has the chance to do so. Um, let's see. And I think this is also the chapter where he goes into Yoli's room and he like takes her shirt. And so now he's like walking around with this shirt like it's a pacifier almost. Yeah, like his little comfort thing, like his Linus blanket. <laughs> so um you see that and then um around what is it towards the end the people from the coast show up and not only is it the people from the coast it is the introduction of a character named mercy and so she's like this exotic bombshell all the men around to see her and so does solomon that's how the chapter ends uh I'll say, I don't like Mercy. I thought she was a good antagonist <laughs> for the things to come. But uh, yeah, I need to throw something in there. So I threw Mercy in there. All right. Uh, after that, it's still Solomon's uh, perspective. So at this point, there's a lot of stuff going on, but we still don't really know what's going on with Yoli and Sheer. We don't know where they are at this point. Uh, so more time is going by. Um, and so Stacia, Ryan, some of the others, they decide instead of waiting, instead of waiting, we're going to go out and look for Yoli ourselves. Uh, so as they're getting ready to leave, Solomon decides he's going to stay behind. And so Ryan, I think, was the first to kind of be like, you know, looking at him sideways, like, what are you staying here for? Is it because of old girl from the coast is here now? Or is it because you're scared? Like, what's the deal? So he kind of drops it and they leave. So within that time, you kind of see Solomon uh, latching on to Morgan. He becomes her teacher, her watcher in, in place because now stage is gone. And you see that Morgan has a, a big mouth like Magda. She's a very much a sassy little girl. Uh, and I think this is also where you kind of see Solomon's temptation kind of starting to hit now. He's noticing Mercy more. He, she's on the radar at this point. And so you see that transition in him. And that's pretty much how it's left because we're gonna transition into uh, Yoli. We finally pick up where she's at. So any insight into Solomon and what's going on with him with Yoli's absence um, and now this introduction with Mercy into his life? I I liked Mercy for her, her part in the story. When she came along, that just it just kind of turned everything upside down because before it was all, you know, Solomon and Yoli back and forth. And now we have this other girl or other lady, I should say. So I just wanted to see how that was how that was gonna play out. And you know, I was like, oh, where'd she come from? So another twist. Yeah. 
yeah I kind of saw it as like a test to see where Solomon's might like where his heart really lied because um I don't know to me I feel this is a part of him losing the not losing the affection that he had for uh Yoli but like deciding that maybe she, that wasn't the path for him and like read and um, finding a new direction like it would mess in with mercy as a new option for him but um yeah so I, I and I liked the the, con- the conflict that bringing her into the story um brought yeah did so yeah yeah I think it gave uh Solomon a new challenge you know uh because he's he's been running around I mean first he was running around after Stacia now he started running around after Yoli now Yoli done broke his heart. And so now it's like, now he's got a new something to kind of go after. And, you know, initially when he tries to get at Mercy, she kind of, you know, uh, you know, push him off to the side a little bit. You know, she didn't initially really give in and stuff. So I think this was a good challenge for him. Um, I initially liked Mercy. Um, I think as time went on, I kind of started to not like her. But initially at, at the beginning, I'm like, okay, this might be cool. You know, Solomon can get his mind off of uh, Yoli and, you know, get back to business. But, you know, we'll, we'll kind of see how that goes. And, you know, but I, I actually thought it was a, a good twist to bring in, change of pace. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry, I had to deal with something, but I was uh, overheard a little bit of uh, what was going on. So, all right, all right. All right. So the story then transitions back to Yoli and uh, I think, I don't know, her writing her piece from here on out for me was very emotional because I had to put into play all of the different trauma that she had endured. And now we have a whole new set of trauma. So the scenes opens with her basically beaten up, bruised, tortured, bloody, eyes swollen, just gone through the ringer. And she's waking up in a cell. So we don't know how she got there. We don't know if it's the pit, another enemy, what. And so you kind of see her going in and out of consciousness. Um, she doesn't know where Sheer is. And then toward, this was also a very short chapter. And then towards the tail end, she realizes that she's not in the cell alone, that there's somebody in the cell with her. And so that's kind of how it ends. So, <laughs> and you're already smirking. So we'll wait till, <laughs> wait till we get there. Um, so we have that short little clip. Um, and from here on out, it was almost like I saw a movie playing in my head and I just wrote down what I saw. So now the scene ends like Ken left and we go to Solomon. So he's back at the compound. Yeah, Solomon's irritating from here on out for me. So he has basically warmed up to um, Mercy. They've been gone for, or Stacia and Ryan have been gone for a whole bunch of days um let's see okay just making sure i'm on the right page yeah so uh him and mercy have developed this little thing for each other he's finally starting to give in it's almost like they're playing house because he has to get up every day and attend to morgan and then here comes mercy she's braiding hair and all this other kind of stuff right and so during all this they finally have the introduction of stacia and ryan and the crew they're finally coming back but they're coming back empty-handed there is no uh Yoli or Sheer and so everybody's kind of side-eyeing Solomon because he's sitting on the steps in the rain having this intimate encounter with Mercy and everybody's giving him the side eye so Stacia goes um over to talk to them uh one second all right so we're back quick little intermission life is happening we're rolling with it okay so uh, Stacia calls a little meeting just between her and the boys. And this is where you really begin to see Ryan's aggression towards Solomon. He's saying a lot of stuff to him that ends up ending in a fight. So now the boys is beefing, Stacia's mad and all this kind of stuff. So pause, question, was Ryan just in picking a fight with Solomon? Why not? I mean, at some point, you, a, a man can only take so much. Like I said, we, we got Solomon's already been chasing after Stacia. He chased after Jolie for so long, and she basically just took his heart, squeezed it in her hand, and threw it on the ground. And then she took off. I mean, what is, what is Solomon supposed to do? Like, 
Is he supposed to just wait his whole life for her to mature up, you know, and grow up and stuff? And, you know, I don't know. So he needs to move on. That's why I thought Mercy was a nice change of pace for him. It gave him something else to uh, kind of look after and get his mind off of Yoli. So for everybody to be beefing with him about him moving on, even him not going to find Yoli, like, how many times have we been out looking for Yoli? Why do I have to do this one more time? Like, you know. So, I mean, that's that's just my thing on it. Okay. Anybody else? I, <clears throat> I get why Ryan was upset. And, you know, it's just we need more help. All the bodies we can get, more more guys to fight guns or whatever. But at a certain point, I think he should have let it go. And wanting to fight and take it is to where he took it. I, yeah, he, he was hating a little bit. <laughs> okay. I mean, leave that man alone. You know how it is when new lady comes along. Sorry. <laughs> so the new lady comes along. <laughs> All right. Yeah, um, I understand Ryan, but like I agree, I think he's in the wrong. But I see where he's coming from because he has he has feel like he's got to, like a relationship with Yoli, like they're, they're friends. So I see he's like supporting her back. He's like protect, like, protecting her. Yeah. But, if you see the way that she treated Solomon and I just, yeah, I think it's that it's their game for Solomon, to be honest. Right, right. Okay. So there's another little twist I wanted to throw in there. So in the midst of the fight, <clears throat> excuse me, um, the boys hear gunfire. So now they realize that there's uh, a threat and war is starting to happen. So they run outside. They see that the pit is out front, guns are blazing, in scene, right? So then we go back over to... Uh, Yoli and she's finally gaining a little bit of strength and energy she's still pretty beat up and she begins to have this conversation with the stranger that's in the cell with her it's this guy named Jude and Jude is a um how do you explain Jude he is he's not crazy he has some issues he doesn't see the world in a very realistic light and so Yoli begins to pick up on that um, and he begins to tell her about the angel that's been coming to the window and talking to him and giving him things. So we find out that uh, the angel we know is Sheer. She's been the one who's been there taking care of everything, uh, keeping Yoli alive, so to speak. Um, make sure this is done. Perfect. And uh, so the next thing, uh, let's see, I think this is also the chapter where uh, Yoli remembers, let's see. Yeah, no, so Yoli actually has a conversation with Shira. Shira comes to the window and she's able to see her and see that she's okay and they're talking and all that stuff. So stuff's going on at the pit. Shira's not sure what's going on, but then there's also stuff going on at the compound and the compound is having a full on attack. So, the next chapter is probably my favorite chapter to write. So this one was called Dead in the Water, chapter nine. And so this is where the reckoning happens. And you would think that with such a pivotal move into the book, it'd kind of be like, okay, well, that's the end of the story. No, the story continues, but this was um, probably one of my favorites. So there's war going on. Shear is able to get Yoli out of the cell. Jude is out of the cell. And as they're trying to escape, they kind of get cut off by Sela, Santana, and Jared the Fourth. So uh, Yoli and Shear dive behind some boxes so that they're not seen. And you hear the start of a monologue from Sela. This is where she's basically fed up in her own right too. She's like, you guys keep promising me stuff. Uh, I keep doing what you guys want me to do. You guys are not giving me what's owed to me. And you see Santana still being slick with her. And so instead of listening to him, pulls out a gun. That's the end of Santana. So Jared, with his trifle himself, he is, um, I forget, him and, him and Sayla have some words. So he thinks he's slick, pulls out a gun, shoots her. She goes flying back. And then the first thing that he thinks to do is to go through Santana's pockets. So I'm like, that just kind of lets you know his character right there. So then forgetting that Sayla always rocks with a bulletproof vest, 
she gets up. So now he's backtracking, scrambling, scared, trying to, you know, um, you know, plead his case. And so then you hear the monologue about Selah to where her whole life she's been enslaved to somebody else. She's always had to be under somebody's thumb. And so what she thought she was getting was the sense of freedom is now taken away from her yet again by these dudes. He don't care. She don't either. She shoots him. Thoughts? Well, for me, I was like, oh, oh man. Now I see why you guys was quiet early on. <laughs> in, uh, Sayla in the daily, because I thought she was down. She was the daily and protecting Yoli. And so I was talking about Team Sayla. Yeah, yeah. She <laughs> now I see why. Yeah, I, I like this chapter. I, I like this chapter too. Okay, good deal. Yeah, I loved action in that chapter. And um, yeah, and seeing more of um, the daily, like more of, um, cause she, I didn't really know much about her prior to this in a sense of like her feelings of being, cause she seems, you would think she was happy, but I can see where she got her frustrations from, from always having to be somebody else's help and never being yeah. free to do her own thing. So yeah, I think it was, it was a good chapter and I loved the, and I was happy that, you know, the rest were killed. I was like, yes, yeah, <laughs> good. <laughs> Yeah, it was a good chapter. <laughs> okay. Yeah, of course I love this chapter. Um, I think this is one of the reasons why I, I might have been our first talk when we talked when we were in the first book. We we're talking about things to uh kind of extend or make a spin-off or something, or about it, it could have been just a me and you conversation. But I was like, Yeah, Selah, like we don't technically know a whole lot about her. So getting more backstory on her would be kind of neat. Um, I think she's kind of been a uh like a prodigal son position. I think when she was with Yoli, she could have had the world at her hands, but she saw it in a different view. She saw it as, well, I'm at the beck and call of Yoli. Not like this is truly my friend who, you know, I'm here to protect, but like we girls, like, you know, it was right. more of a like, I'm being forced into this lifestyle. I've never had nothing, not realizing that she had everything because she had Yoli with her, you know, but she right. decided to go a different route and she found out that, you know, the grass ain't always greener on the other side, you know? So I think she came into that. And unfortunately, you know, she didn't have a chance to come back home, but, you know. Well, I think this is also that point where I tried to give Sayla a little bit of humanity because we see her on the good side, then we see her on the dark side. But this is like kind of a favorite of all time. So Star Wars episode three, where you see the transition from Anakin into Darth Vader. I think this was kind of that moment for her. Sorry, I nerded out on a whole different other fandom, but that's mm -hmm. what it gives me, you know? So back to the story, Sayla leaves out of the room and this is the chance for Yoli and Sheer to escape. So they're ducking it for the door. And right when Yoli gets to the door, she's kicked in the back out into the rain. And so the mood outside is there's gunfire, people are trying to flee, it's chaos, there's a thunderstorm, there's rain. It's just an utter nightmare. And so she goes flying out into a puddle and Sayla comes out like a one woman army. She's taking people out. She's trying to kill Yoli, she's trying to drown her. Jude comes out of nowhere. He jumps in trying to save her and she guts him like a fish, goes back to, like trying to kill Yoli. And during the process, a crash of thunder happens. And then Sayla falls forward and all her blood is being spilled on Yoli. Yoli looks up to see that it was Sheer who pulled the trigger and then end scene. I was like, I wrote that for me. So, <laughs> so I enjoyed that part. That was a good chapter for me. That, but that's why I felt like earlier when you were saying, that uh, Sheer was kind of rubbing off on Yoli, I feel like it was the other way around. Again, this is because Yoli made that decision, which she didn't even have a plan. She just had a decision. She wanted to go do something, but she drug Sheer into that. And so now Sheer has become a murderer. Now, I mean, she should have done it. I'm not saying she shouldn't have, but that's for a 13 year old to be traumatized like that. I mean, I mean, obviously we'll see a little mm -hmm. later that kind of rubs off on her too. But I think this is also a, um, an indictment on Stacia 
because Stacia had an opportunity to take Sayla out herself and she didn't. Okay, so backtrack. So that was part of the conversation, the Stacia piece. That was a part of the conversation that she had when she returned back to the compound. She had stated that um, while they were out searching for Yoli and Cheer, she had an opportunity to take Sayla out uh, when she saw them in the forest, but uh, Sayla was able to get away before they did so. So there's that. So one, I, I don't blame Stacia because if she would have fired and missed, that could have been the downfall of Stacia, Ryan, and anybody else that they were with. They didn't have the manpower to go up into the pit. And then the other thing is, it's like Sheer wanted to go. She begged to go. So, so Yoli didn't just bring her along. Like you, you knew what you were signing up for, maybe in your immaturity, you know. But then at the same token, what would you do to save your sister? Like you knew that she's getting killed right in front of your eyes. How do you defend her when you've already been hurt yourself in the process of trying to save her? So twofold, twofold, I guess, but I don't think that makes uh, Yoli rub off on her. Now she is a murderer. She had to do what she had to do. But she never would have been in that position if it wasn't for Yoli's decisions in the first place. I mean, I could see that part, but she also could have stayed at her butt at home too. And she decided to go. <laughs> But she's 13. She's not even mature enough to make that kind of decision. True that. But I'm just saying she could have stayed at home. She was the one who was sneaking around the whole time anyway, you know, following Yoli around the compound. So there's that. All right. Any other insight before we move on? I thought this was golden of sheer because I was thinking all the way back to when Yoli, you know, was packing up and leaving and Sheer was like, oh, no, I'm coming with you. I'm coming with you. I'm coming with you. And we're like, oh, man, this is this is all bad. Mm -hmm. And now Sheer, you know, at the end of the day, is the hero. And thank God she did come because, I mean, Sheer saved the day. Yeah. They saved the day. And, and, you know, at first it was like, oh, no, please stay. Please don't bring her along. Mm -hmm. She came through and saved the day. See, I even think about it like that, too. That is, that's, yeah. That inside yeah that. I, I agree with that. And I would say she, like, just from her... Jude saying that she was an angel she's like throughout the whole process she's been there she's been strong she's been like you know looking after her and she's just so young it's just like wow okay well done see I didn't even pick that up that's good insight too. <laughs> that's excellent see yeah when Jude said the angel I knew I knew <laughs> the angel we know who that is all right so now we have the fall of the pit. <clears throat> the head, Santana, Jarrett, Sayla, all of them are gone. Uh, so then it goes back into the perspective of Solomon. Um, this particular chapter was called Out of the Ring. And so he's sitting up on top of the uh, watchtower with his boo. They're all caked up in the rain under a tarp and they're watching, you know, the gunfire and stuff that's going on, you know, making sure everybody's safe or whatever. And then keep in mind, there's still a threat going on at the compound. So people are, there's this chaos, guns ablazing, right? And so Solomon is watching in the scope of the gun and he sees this girl coming through the front gate, like walking very slow and none of the bullets are hitting her. She's kind of blind to all the chaos that's going on around her. And then she collapses in the courtyard and then there's Sheer. So he realizes that this ghost of a person that's covered in blood and bruises and dirt is uh, Yoli. So he's still watching in the scope and he sees the family running out into the courtyard. They scoop her up and they go inside. And so he's kind of in shock at this point because from my perspective, I think that Yoli is probably the last person he's thinking about at this moment because he has Mercy right here with him. And so, uh mercy turns to him and you know she's like you know you can go check on her whatever and he's like no i'm gonna stay here with you and so that's kind of like the end of the chapter with that so chef you had some things you were saying to me earlier <laughs> about this scene so what are your thoughts sir i told you to save it so um i mean i just think it was, it was really cinematic like i could literally see like you know the gunshots and stuff going off, fighting back and forth. 
And then there's just these two people really highlighted one person, but there's these two people walking through all the chaos slowly. And then Solomon just kind of looking through a scope, like, who is that? You know, and then, oh my goodness, it's Yoli, you know, and then everybody going out to get her. And um, so that was really dramatic. And then, I mean, Mercy, Mercy turns into Sarah, Abraham's husband. And she like, okay, go check on your girl. Who does, for what? Like, She's trying to be nice. Sometimes niceness gets you in trouble, you know, like pick a side, your side. <laughs> okay. Pick a side, my side. Got it. Yeah. Know it. Okay. Um, I thought this was a real good kind of cin cinematic, um, like your husband said. It just I could see all this going on. I was thinking like more like the, the matrix, how she was just coming through and <laughs> 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 and then when she you know dropped and everything um i was to me i was like oh perfect she's back now i immediately i thought about mercy oh mm. I, oh yeah <laughs> now, okay now All right yeah yeah and i think it was um it was the tension Really, like rose at that point and I was like okay now I'm gonna see what who Solomon decides to do but obviously he just in you think okay so he decided on mercy because he didn't follow he didn't follow the family into the when to the compound once they got um Yoli so I'm like okay so we'll see how this plays out how is Yoli gonna feel knowing that Solomon went with another woman while she was away so oh. I don't know, it got very interesting in terms of like tension and like potential plot, plot um points there so yeah yep yep Okay, so we'll see what happens now. I'm not going to stop at every chapter. I'm just going to try to hit some major points um, that I can remember. So once Yoli is in and she's safe, there's this scene where Stacia is like attending to her, her wounds. So there's a lot of blood and screaming and crying going on. And again, Solomon tries to make the attempt to like go check on her. Ryan is kind of blocking. He's like, you know, why are you even worried about her right now? Da, 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 da. And so they're getting ready to fight again. Uh, his girl Gia breaks it up. And then Magda has to step in because now uh, Stacia and Solomon are having words back and forth. So Magda, the mediator, comes through, shuts everybody down. Um, and then we go into, uh, well, real quick though. Okay, no, I'll wait, I'll wait. Okay, so then we go into, um, more of the mercy in Solomon, like, well, now that she's back, so how do you feel? What's going on? And so Solomon basically pledges his love to mercy, like, I'm not worried about her, I'm worried about you, that kind of thing. Um, and then there seems to be another attack coming in from the outside. So everybody's watching as now the pit soldiers are running into the courtyard seeking, you know, safety. And so now the soldiers have them down on the ground. Finally, there's these huge military trucks coming and they bust down the front gate of the compound and out steps Hollis. And Solomon, he's stuck now. So now this dude that he's hated from jump is finally back. And this guy is the reason why they were able to corral the last bit of the pit members who probably didn't know that their leadership had all been killed off. So now we have the introduction of Hollis back into the fold, literally like maybe a day after Yoli has returned. So just when we thought, okay, the story can end now that Sailor is dead, like, no, now we have a whole nother set of drama that's about to play off. So thoughts. Solomon, Solomon. can't win. <laughs> it's just like, and maybe I just feel this way just because he's always been my favorite character. But it's like he just lose at every turn. And I mean, mm -hmm. I, we have we haven't got to it yet, but he's gonna find out he lost again. You know, <laughs> like how many L's can one man take? So you know, I'm I'm glad I'm glad his outcome. Well, I can't say I'm glad. I wanted his outcome to be different, but because it wasn't what I thought it was gonna be. I'm glad it ended up the way it ended. So I'll just say that way till we get there. You're so far ahead, but okay. <laughs> I know. Just... For me at this point, I'm kind of I'm kind of side-eyeing Solomon. He seems to be 
like real wishy-washy, you know, he didn't go out uh, to help go get Yoli and this other girl. I mean, I, I get the confusion on his part. You know, it's been a roller coaster for him. But man, he was like, come on, man. <laughs> uh, just and and I knew when Hollis came back, that was oh yeah, I allowed him. Whole uh, another set of problems. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. I actually kind of feel sorry for Solomon because like he was in love with Yoli, but Yoli's like a brat. So it's like, how do you like, I felt bad that you how do you manage that kind of relationship? So mm -hmm. he probably thought to himself, well, this is another woman, she's stable, she seems to be like, you know, level headed. But then everything yeah. seems to be going against it, <laughs> going yeah. against him. So I was just like, okay, let's see where this goes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we know Hollis is the old head, the bounty hunter, used to be uh, Stacia's boo. That is Yoli's father. So the next scene cuts to where, I keep saying scene, chapter cuts to where uh, Yoli is finally feeling up and about. Hollis walks into her room. They have a little discussion. You know, he's kind of like, glad you're alive. You know, your mom told me what happened, blah, blah, blah. Took all those guys out. And then come to find out that Santana had slaughtered his whole entire family. Wife, mom, baby kids, they're all wiped out. So Hollis was in this vengeance frame of mind. Like, I'm gonna go and take everybody out. So now we kind of see where Yoli gets it from. She's always trying to run out and avenge something, always trying to go and get revenge about something. Well, it's in her DNA because her daddy just did the same thing. He, him and his bounties just took out all the pit members, right? So uh, it's also at this point that Stacia comes into the room and then you, you see from Yoli's perspective uh, how Stacia and Hollis are now connecting again. It's the way they talk to each other, their eye contact, uh, even in the silence of between them, you can kind of see them being pulled back, you know, to each other. And that's only because of Yoli. They both care for Yoli. Now that, you know, Hollis knows who everybody is and that Yoli is there and what happened, he, you kind of see him being more endeared to be there. So there's that. Uh, then we have a conversation with Magda. Um, Yoli has been pouting about her scars, pouting about what happened, pouting about her place, doesn't know what to do. So she thinks she's going to hold up in her room, you know, and just not deal with anybody. So Magda comes in there. She's like, listen, you got to get your life together. This ain't working. It's not a good look. Gives her a new shirt. Like, here's your new shirt. Go get your new life. You know, giving her the, the Magda pep talk like she does. Um, also in this point, Sheer comes in because you see a little taste of how Sheer is grappling with the decision that she made to save Yoli. So she's asking Yoli, like, you know, what should I do and how should I feel and pray for me? I don't know what's going on. And you kind of see that immature mind kind of wrestling with the consequences of what she did. Uh, from there, uh, we'll skip over a few things. We go into the meeting. So this particular meeting was called by Magda. Now that the pit has been disassembled, Xavier and Mercy plan on going back to the, uh, the coast where they're from. So right before the meeting starts, Solomon and Mercy are beefing. He's like, well, you know, how do you know him? And so Mercy's kind of like, I told you, I already know him. Like, get off my back. Don't keep talking to me about it, whatever, whatever. So Solomon knows something is up. Because now she's mad because Hollis is back in the picture. So he's like pressing her, like, how do you know? <laughs> how do you know Hollis? <laughs> do you need to say something? <laughs> Just Solomon taking more L. That's all it is. I mean, every woman, every woman he goes after, he takes the L. It doesn't make a difference. So I mean, versus, I mean, you start with Stacia, then uh -huh. you unknowingly can't get with Stacia. So you fall in love with her daughter. Then, who you thought was her sister, mind you, then you turn around and realize that, oh, Stacia actually has a baby daddy who is the daddy of the one who I love now. Now you find out the new girl I love, she messed with the baby daddy too. I mean, oh. how many more L's can I <laughs> I mean, this, you can't. I mean, this is one of those times you be like, you can't make this up. But Simone made this up. Like, 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 I mean, how do you take this many L's? And so this is another reason. Remember, before I asked, I was like, 
I had to remember like how old is everybody? Because you know, Stacia's with Hollis, but yet Solomon's trying to get at Stacia, but yet he's trying to get at Yoli, but yet he's with Mercy, but Mercy was already with Hollis. Like man, y'all don't care. <laughs> well, I mean, you have to it's, it's having a kid at a very young age, which kind of spiraled this whole mess together. So yeah. okay. So they're beefing right before the meeting starts. And when the meeting when the meeting is actually in play, you can obviously see that Xavier, who is Mercy's dad, has beef with Hollis. Hollis is arrogant. He don't care about nobody in that room. He's not tripping. Uh, Xavier makes a, a rude remark about Yoli, which in 10 turns Hollis upside down. He's clapped back and he's like, listen, you're just mad because I did ABCD with your daughter. Now the whole room then blew up. Everybody's like, oh my God, I can't believe you said that. Um, and so again, Magda has to step in, calm everybody down. She's like, y'all can get up out of here. Hollis, I'll deal with you later. Everybody just chill out. So that scene was animated. Let's see. Then it goes into Mercy and Solomon leaving, or not Solomon, um, Mercy and Xavier leaving. So Solomon is upset. He tries to go and talk to Yoli, but he's giving her the, I love you, but we can't be together, girl. So she runs off crying. Um, let's see. And then we're going to skip some stuff. I, 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 for, I forgot something, though. This is, yeah. a, this is when I stopped liking Mercy. It wasn't, mm. it wasn't just because she had past history with Hollis, because, I mean, who ain't got past history? But when she <laughs> broke down the story about her lying on Hollis. Yeah, yeah, about, about taking that. advantage of her. Like, I'm like, oh, bro, drop her. Like, mm -mm. I, like, again, he just taking L's. I just, I don't know what to say. Just leave everybody alone, so. Okay. So after that, Yoli has this moment of awakening. So you see the tender side of uh, her relationship with Stacia. She goes down into the garden after talking a little bit uh, with Magda again. And this is where Stacia begins to tell her, like, it wasn't your fault about Jared. It wasn't your fault about the lies. It wasn't your fault about all these elements that led you to the place to where you are. Um, and so I think it's at this point where Yoli kind of, and I'm saying kind of because of other things that happened, kind of begins to have a change of heart and a change of mind. Uh, so that was a touching moment. And there's also more bonding going on between Stacia and Hollis at this point. Um, and then Magda gives Yoli this pep talk of, oh wait, no, not yet. Okay. So more time is going by and Solomon is now like ostracized himself from the family. Um, he doesn't fool with Ryan. He's not talking to Stacia. It's just mad awkward around the compound. Um, Magda has made him like the teacher to all the little kids now. So he has his role that he fills. But then other than that, he kind of does his own thing. So he finally gets the guts to like talk to Yoli and they have this quick little, you know, moment. And so that's when she tells Solomon, like, yo, my mom's giving me a birthday party. You should come, you know, blah, blah, blah. And um, so he's like, OK, yeah, I think I'll do that. I might show up, all this kind of stuff. So he shows up to the birthday party. They make this big to do about it. And at the end of the party, Yoli has it made up in her mind. Oh, wait, no, at the party, Yoli gives this big speech. At the end of the speech, Magda's like, all right, y'all, it's been fun. I'm going to go up to my room. So now she's tired. She leaves. And Chev, you want it? That's one of your favorite things that you keep bringing up. <laughs> I just feel like this is one of the parts of the scenes in the movie where you feel like the writing's on the wall. It's like Magda just takes her little leave and it's like a slow, like, all right, y'all, I'm going to bed now. I'll talk to y'all later. And you're just like, no. <laughs> Not Magda, like, We're not just, it. You, but you feeling it though you're like you're just thinking because you always wait like man there's been so many twists and turns in this story and then when you see that that's one of them scenes where you just think like no not mad don't do that don't do that so not yet but you say that every time we talk about it not yet yeah so um at the end of the little speech solomon takes his leave he goes out into like the lobby area of the compound and in is walking mercy from the rain she has returned 
And she's basically like, yeah, my dad told me I was a reproach to our people. He's so upset with me. So I decided to leave and just come back and be with you because I love you, it's me and you. At the same time, Yoli comes flying into the uh, court or the little lobby too. And so Mercy has some little comments for like being, you know, look, being catty. And so Yoli kind of plays it down. She's like, whatever, I'm not gonna feed into this. So this is the next thing where um, Hollis gives Yoli this, this gift. Um, it's like a sleeve that goes up her left arm to cover her scars and she could still hold her weapon. And so she's all, you know, thinking she's cool. She's all feeling it or whatever. So Hollis walks off and Solomon and Mercy step up and Solomon, his eyes look like a cartoon character. He can't stop looking at Yoli. So now Mercy is feeling some kind of way about it. And so they're asking if they're gonna take a trip out to the coast. Is Yoli, or Mercy wanted to see her family. She's like, no, we're not going that way, but you guys should come anyway. Because again, she had, Yoli had just had this conversation with Mercy about, uh, I mean, Magda. Magda, there you go, Magda, about, you know, if that was my man, I wouldn't let no girl come in between me and my man. And so Magda has put this bug in, in Yoli's ear. So Yoli's like, all right, well, yeah, you guys should come on a trip with us. It's going to be fun, blah, 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 blah. The whole time the trip is miserable. Yoli's doing the most. Mercy's getting mad. And they end up going to this place uh, outside of uh, the Kumbas Forest. And they run into this guy named Henderson. And so Henderson's this older guy. And he's kind of like, um, I was telling shit earlier, he reminds me of like, the governor from The Walking Dead, like he's not a Negan, but he's more like a governor. Like you're trying to be a bad guy, but you're really not, you don't have any clout. And he ends up saying something crazy to Yoli, uh, Hollis shoots him. And then in the same token, um, Yoli meets this guy named Pascal. Pascal remembers her from the shore. And so you kind of see that mirroring effect of when Solomon tried to initially kidnapped Yoli from the beach, how he kept grabbing on her. I'm trying to get your attention. I got to tell you something. You got to go with me. You kind of see Pascal doing the same thing. So he's like pulling on her like, hey, I got to talk to her. I got to talk to her. And Hollis is not having it. So uh, and then also you see Solomon being the onlooker with Mercy looking at him. She mad. Everybody's mad. So they go home and there's this bonding moment between Hollis and Yoli. So, you know, they have that finally that father daughter moment. And then um, they get back and to the compound and then Stacia tells Jolie that, hey, there's some dude here for you. And right when she's walking in, uh, she gets thrown up against the wall. So Mercy had hands for Yoli. So now they in there banging. And so Yoli's like, hold on a minute. She's trying to defend herself. So Ryan and Gia jump in the, and they break everything up. So pause, what do you guys think? All right, quick intermission, but we're back. So we finally made it to the big Mercy and Yoli fight. What's going on? I thought, I'm like, this damn Mercy. She has a lot of, <laughs> lot of um, gall. So, I mean, she wants to fight Yoli, who's in, in like her, not kingdom, or I guess in front of, you know, her family and her kingdom. And I was like, this right. Mercy. Yeah, I was, I mean, when Mercy first came along, I was like, okay, cool. New love interest, maybe this helps Solomon out. But now she's like a, I was wanting to get bopped. <laughs> okay. That's all I'll say on that. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that, actually. I was just like, oh God, no, not this. But to me, it was like drama. So it was entertaining to read. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I just, I, I thought, again, like I said, I'd already start, stopped liking Mercy at this point. Um, it was good drama to have there and stuff. But yeah, like, you don't come into somebody else's house and try to start beef with them, especially if you, like, you trying to get in. Like, it ain't like you just showing up to start beef. Like, you trying to slide your way back in. So you need to be on your P's and Q's. And she, I don't know what was up with her. Yeah. I think one thing we forgot, though, or I forgot, was... Uh... 
Mercy had, uh, before they went on this outing, Mercy had tried to prepare like a family dinner for everybody. Mm. And so <laughs> at the family dinner, Morgan pretty much was like reading her like a book, like, I can't eat this food. This is nasty. So she got in trouble. And then um, everybody just had like these little comments. And so she gets upset by that. Solomon tries to defend her, but instead of addressing the group, he tries to address Yoli. And he's like, you know, how dare you guys act foolish, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, yeah, you're right. I apologize to everybody. And so he's kind of like, wait, what? Like any other time she would argue me down. So now this time, you know, she's being different. So there was that. So Mercy had been trying to wiggle her way back in but I think at this point she's just kind of like you know I'm fed up with this little girl like I'm tired of her so at the end of the fight <clears throat> uh Hollis pulls every or I think it's Stacia but they pull everybody into the room to talk and Hollis was like I'm the only dude you better be fighting over until you're married mercy you can get up out of here I'm done I don't even like you and he basically calls Solomon out like you're a punk how dare you have these two women fighting over you? Da, da, da. Mercy announces that she's leaving. So Solomon's like, we're leaving. And she's like, you're not going anywhere. I'm leaving. So Solomon makes it up in his mind that he's going to just do his own thing. So he decides he's leaving the compound at this point. And you also see where he and Yoli um, have their final bit of closure. He finally breaks up with her officially. Um, and that's that. Uh, and I'm trying to think. I think somewhere around there, uh, Hollis and Stacia get married. And then you also see the scene where um, they have to say goodbye to Magda. So they're getting ready to go out on another outing. And Magda paints in the little uh, lobby area. They go in there and they attend to her. And then that's where she has one last conversation with Yoli. Yoli realizes like, oh wait, this isn't just a regular conversation. She's actually preparing me and she's saying goodbye to me. And so you see the emotional side of that. Um, so when Magda does die, Stacia takes it extremely hard because she never got to have that closure with her mother. Um, Cause she got there and immediately had to go to work. She had responsibilities. It wasn't like she was able to go in there and just have time with her mom. Uh, so Stacia was supposed to handle the funeral piece for Magda. She can't do it. So Yoli steps in and does it. Um, yeah, Solomon was there for that. That was what happened before the big fight. And then, yeah, it's pretty much the tail end. You begin to see how life what you say? No, I was just going to say, I felt like this was going to be the last chance for Solomon and Yoli to kind of make a decision on what they go do. And, you know, they tried to have a little talk, but Yoli's still being Yoli. And Solomon's not like, he's not, he, even though I don't blame him for a lot of stuff, I still don't think he was mature enough to be like, look, this is what I'm trying to bring to the table. Is you with this or not? He just lets her be Yoli and then gets frustrated. Like, okay, well, forget it. She's just being Yoli. I can't even have a real conversation with her. She's just going to bat her eyes at me and, but not really be serious about this situation. Right. And so I think, I think that was a missed opportunity, hmm. you know? Okay. And then, um, go ahead. I don't know. So at this point, I'm kind of sick of Solomon. He just <laughs> he seems to be, you know, just a wreck. Like I want him just to stand up and he's just a mess. <laughs> and I think that was his way of dealing with everything. Like since I, I can't be with Mercy, I can't stay here with Yoli. Like the family is divided because of me. Maybe it's best if I just like do my own thing and go my own way. It's like, I think you can only stay in chaos for so long before you make a decision to like get up and go and find something better for yourself. So. There's a, I think that's why I made him make that decision. So, uh, oh, go ahead, Amanda. Oh, no, I was just going to say that I actually just don't think they're compatible, Solomon yeah. and Yoli. When you look at their personalities, like he's a, a holy man in some respects. Mm -hmm. He likes to 
and she seems to be a bit more wild and a bit more reckless but yeah. like yeah so I just don't think they're compatible and I think that's where yeah. we see this divide yeah yep yeah. um from there uh we go into pretty much tying up the end of the book to where we kind of see like how things have progressed with from Yoli's perspective uh Pascal is now a part of the group he has made uh, relationships between Hollis and Ryan and him and Yoli are spending more time together. Um, Yoli has made peace with uh, Solomon leaving and she's just trying to find herself, herself. She's stepping into the role and yeah, the book ends. Then we have the epilogue or what I call the aftermath, which is shown from Shear's perspective. Um, and I started, I started writing a spinoff from Shear's perspective, with her being a little bit older, doubt I'll finish it, but <laughs> I don't know yet. But uh, from Shear's perspective, we see uh, uh, what happened. Oh, okay. So how Pascal and Yoli got together. Then we see how everybody basically got pregnant, not Yoli, but like Gia and Stacia. And then after childbirth, Stacia passes away. I loved her, I wanted to teach her, but I was like, no, it's time for Stacia to go too. So I was sad when I wrote that. So Stacia's gone. Um, and you just begin to see through Shear's eyes how it affected everybody, how it affected Yoli, and how just like Stacia wasn't able to do the funeral for her mother when she passed, Yoli wasn't able to do it either. And so we see Solomon's return to kind of come back and help close that book, Yoli. So yeah, Pascal was there on that. I'm going to give you hugs and I'm going to be here. But on that more deep, maybe spiritual level, Solomon had to be the one to come back and help her get that closure. So I wrote that in. And um, yeah, and then it just begins to paint a little picture about how life was at the compound as they grew up. So any other thoughts? I, I thought the... Um... The ending, I, I, I loved it because it, from the, it just all ties together from Yoli, you know, at the beginning, you know, you thought she was going to be the leader, you know, and then we go on this wild ride and everything comes together. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's mm -hmm. now, it's her turn. Yeah. To, you know, what was supposed to come to her in the beginning. It, right. took, it took a few lefts and a few rights to get here. <laughs> right. But then I, I thought it was awesome. I was Thank sad you. about Stacia. That was oh. like, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> okay. I didn't see that coming. Good yeah, I, I, I like the ending. I like I like the wrap up. Everybody's lives seem to be, I was happy that everybody seemed to have a, have a happy ending. So like I was, cause I was worried for Yoli that she wouldn't be able to find love. So to see her settle down Pascal, I was like, okay, that's good. Like she met, managed to settle down. I was a bit sad for Solomon because he never found, he never went on to marry or have, you know, children or anything like that. But then like, I realized that that's not always the, the happiest And It's like, everybody has their own way of dealing with things. Right. So I felt like maybe that was just how, what he needed to do for himself. So yeah. 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 Yeah, I kind of felt that same way. I was like, dang, Solo ends up solo, you know, <laughs> nobody by his side, you know, and I never really, I never really bought into Pascal. I don't know why, probably just because I was team solo all the whole story. So, but I never got into Pascal, like to this moment, I'm like, I don't even like this dude. Like, what is he doing? Like, <laughs> you know, but yeah, I think it was a great ending. Um, this is this has been a trilogy of trilogies. So I really appreciate it, the story. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate you guys going on the wild ride with me. And then um, hopefully as uh, Annabelle and I put out more content, we can do this again and again and again. Um, any updates, Annabelle? So I think I told you that I finished the, the trellants. Yes. But um, I'm editing it again. I decided that I'd go through edits because I was going to look for agent, but um, I got quite a few rejections. So I'm like, but it gave me good advice. So I'm going yeah. back and re-editing the book. Yeah. yeah. And I'm also writing my third book. So yeah. Awesome. <laughs> cool. Well, whenever you're ready, I think they're going to love Trellance. 
So okay. yeah, that, I think when you're ready, we're ready. <laughs> All right. Good question, Annabelle. Yes. Oh, how I don't. I've never written nothing, but how can you be like? editing one book and then writing another? <laughs> <laughs> That's way too much. <laughs> I understand, yeah, no, it's, it's hard. It's not easy, yeah. it is hard, but like one day I'll do one thing and the next day I'll do a different, like a okay. different task. But um, yeah, I don't know, like I've been reflecting and I'm like, I want to improve my writing before I put out the second book. So mm -hmm. I'm just like going, so at the moment I'm learning, like I'm really trying to go through craft books and stuff like that. So it is hard to juggle all these things, but like, you know, I don't know, I just do it like one day I do one thing, one day I do a different thing. And like, yeah, so that's how it works for me. Yep. So that process, it also helps you on the second book, I guess, you know, the editing and, you know, yeah. for, for the, the book you're currently writing. So, you, you know, you're doing the editing and all that, maybe, you know, some, I don't know, mistakes or whatever, mm. you know, you, you won't make that in the, in the second book, I guess. That's what I'm hoping for. Yeah. Because, um, like I, I want to improve my writing. So before, so I wrote it and I edited it and I started to search for agents, but then I realized, no, I, I'm not happy with where I am at writing at my skill level at the moment. So yeah. So that's why I've been like trying to learn more. So I don't think I'll put out a book this year but in 2023 i'll probably put one or two out in that year so gotcha. can't wait yeah looking forward to it just you know have confidence in your skills i know Thank you got you. skills um, <laughs> i have to tell simone all the time you know because you're, you're always going to be your harshest critic yeah you're going to second guess and second guess and second guess so you know i try to encourage simone that no this is this is great just do it you know, instead of, you know, beating herself to death, thinking it's not good enough, so. That's like when I was telling um, Annabelle before, like, it. I think that the hardest piece of writing is like taking your vision and putting it in such a way to where other people understand your vision. But I'm like, she's good at that. Like, when I went through Eden Project, I was like, this is probably like one of those elite sci-fi books. This is not one of the mediocre amateurs I'm trying to do it. Like, like no, she wrote the mess out of that book. Oh, and so it's like, I'm still team Bri uh, Brianna. So I'm just like, <laughs> so it doesn't matter. <laughs> thank you, thank you. That helps a lot though, definitely. Yeah. And has, do you have any projects that you're working on at the moment? Uh, I keep going back and forth. Uh, still the same the one I told you about before, the dark romance. And then um, just talking to my kids and talking to Chev, like I started this, it's kind of like based around like androids type thing. There's this video game that I love. It's called Become Human, or no, Detroit Become Human. And I was like, yo, I could write a book, like centered around this, you know, same concept. So uh, I wrote like maybe like a page or two and I'm just kind of like, I don't know, we'll see. But I've been, um, I finished a ghostwriting project and just trying to solicit for more work like that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, still building on that same one project. So, mm -hmm. okay. yep, yeah. yeah. All right, guys. Ed, Chev, you have anything you want to shout out? Anything you want to No, I just, uh... Obviously, I appreciate being a part of this, even though, you know, I live here, but still, you know, <laughs> you're right I appreciate there. being a part of this. Um, yeah. It's been super cool getting to meet Ed, Ed and Annabelle, you know, yeah. y like y'all my peoples, y'all my family. I know, I'm trying you to know go to saying? Seattle. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Ed, you done show support in other ways as well, man. Greatly appreciate yeah, you, yeah. man. And just like, yeah. so yeah, this, this has been awesome. And I, I really hope that this grows, you know, not just with, obviously with Simone's book, but Annabelle, right. when, when you decide you're going to release your stuff, yes. yours and any other authors that come to the fold and like this really becomes a big thing and like having these authors, I don't even know, what is this? Like just we just book clubbing, we sessions. just book clubbing, yeah, book clubbing, you know, just, you know, just doing this all over the nation, all over the world with a lot of different people. And this could be a platform for other people. So yeah, yeah I, I think um, I reached out to you at, uh, uh, I have an author friend who has like a zombie book uh -huh. and so I, I didn't know if you wanted to be a part of that loop too but we were going to try to organize that and get that together too so that'll be like one of those soon to come things um, Annabelle I don't know if that's your genre but we can kind of you know get it all together but um, Sylvester Barzi he has amazing books and like 
one thing that I try to do when I make connections with authors is to not just, here's my book, let me see your book, but to actually make bonds to where we can learn from each other. And so with him, his branding is like spot on. Like there are so many things I'm like, wow, how does he even come up with that? Like his concepts are amazing. And so I had talked to him um, some time ago just about maybe doing around with his books. He has a series of books as well. So don't know if that's your genre, but uh, that's probably going to be the next like book club. And because I'm waiting on you, Annabelle, whenever you're ready, this is your platform. But, <laughs> when, you know, until then. <laughs> So, but yeah, so we'll, we'll talk more about that later. Yeah. Annabelle, I'm about to start your book. Oh, thank you. You're gonna love it. Sweet. You're gonna love it. I, I, mean, I, I couldn't read this and start your book. I've had your book for uh, probably a little over a month now. But okay. like I said, I, I don't see how you could be editing one book. And then, <laughs> <laughs> I can't read more than one book at a time. So I'm starting your book. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're, you're gonna love it. Eden Project is crazy. This is good. It's good. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna get some pictures. I'm trying to uh, get myself cleaned up. I'm letting my. my I know. Face. I see I you. you. I see you real. I, I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. You know. You're good, <laughs> strong. The farmer get it lined up because I, you know, I, I want to look decent. I yeah, I, I got you. I got you. Simone, All right. Okay. Thank you, Simone. What? I'm sorry. This has been a blessing. I'm. I'm glad. Uh, all you guys and... i really love those books yeah so same here it's thank been very you. fun going over it again yeah thank you uh well yeah. shoot i keep telling chev like man before we make our great migration we're gonna come up to uh seattle it's only what maybe eight hour drive we do that eight or like or like 12 You're yeah see. all right we no we just drove what yeah, two 25, days straight yeah 25 you know, hours two days. so okay so here's the thing Okay, so we went to Texas for our visit, but it was like 10 hours to Arizona. So we stopped in Arizona, had a hotel room, got back on the road and did like another 11, 12 hours to Texas and um, stayed there for a few days. So the day we were supposed to leave, your girl had messed up the hotel reservations. And so we didn't have an extra night in the hotel. So we had to leave. So I was calling ahead to Arizona and I was like, yo, we got to come in like a day early. Is that going to work? But it was New Year's Eve. And so they were sold out. They were like, no. So I was like, forget it. We just got to drive. Me and Chev tag team for 25 hours, only stopping to get gas and go to the bathroom all the way back from Texas to California. I think we left Texas um, Thursday oh, afternoon. So, yeah. Thursday afternoon. And we got home Friday. Sunday. No, it was, it was Saturday, New Year's. It was New Year's was Eve. Oh, okay. Yeah, we, we made it home like New Year's Eve, like late evening. Did the kids so, allow y'all to do that? Huh? The kids allowed y'all to do that? They had no choice. <laughs> Just go to sleep. Just eat these snacks and go to sleep. Man, for real. <laughs> I had my headphones on most of the job. <laughs> but yeah. Right. So do you guys live in, where, where do you live? Sacramento or? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're in Sacramento. So I grew up not too far from you guys. Oh, real where? Reading. Oh, okay. Wow, we used to go cool. to Reading for like uh, high school football games and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah Reading. Okay. And, uh, we moved 11 miles south in Anderson. That's where I spent a lot of time. Okay. I, I was there from 76 to 85. Okay. So how long cool. you been in Seattle? Uh, since 85. Oh, since 85. Okay. Yep. Uh, Chev is from. I'm a, I'll let you guys know because I go back to Reading like twice a year. Okay. Oh, cool! Yeah, so, yeah. No, yeah. we we gotta connect, and I'm coming to London one day too, just so you oh, know. Yeah. But you, you yeah. gotta take me to. We gotta go someplace to eat. All yeah, that. Stuff. Sure. All that. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be good. <laughs> soon as they tell us we can leave the country now, because they they won't let nobody in and out. It's always yeah. changing. So yeah, and I gotta get to the museums. I got a lot of stuff. Got I need a lot to of see. museums in London. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely, mm -hmm. definitely. Yeah. I know that you had something on your uh, Instagram, some restaurant you went to. I was kind of jealous. You took a picture of your food. It looks so good. <laughs> it's like, we got that out here. <laughs> yeah, Chick-fil-A or KFC. That's about it. <laughs> you have a lot of restaurants in London. If you go to central London, it's mm -hmm. filled with restaurants. There's yeah. a lot of options. Yeah, there's a lot of options. Okay. That's where we finna, finna go. Yeah, so. definitely. All right. I love you guys. Thank you for going on this journey. 
and um yeah we'll have to do it again surrounding something else it doesn't always have to be books but just being able to put out good content us getting together i love it so ooh, one other thing i'm gonna talk to you after i'm done recording so i'm gonna stop the pause button i love you guys great thank you for watching bye, bye.